65. Winds light and variable. Here's our seven day outlook. been on a jet and a crosswind or seen one it's not a great feeling but pilots are trained to handle this sort of thing and the experts say that wild approaches like this one are not that unusual makes me feel better Meteorist Paul, meteorologist Paul Goodlow hopefully it'll make you feel better too no doubt it's oh wow video a plane faced with challenging crosswinds in this case, it's at Madeira Airport in Portugal, known to be one of the worst in the world for crosswinds. It's, you know, one runway and it's wedged in between the ocean and the mountains and it's 200 feet up, so they get stronger winds there. As that wind howls across the airport, there are things that pilots do to keep the plane from going off the runway. The airplane, as it approaches, just like a boat, would have to sheet into the wind so that it's now approaching the runway with a slight angle. That'll allow then the wind to drift them back toward the runway. Otherwise, the wind would push you off to the right of the runway. He's approaching like this. He pushes the rudder in order to straighten the nose and he dips the wing. And lands on one wheel. It looks dramatic, but it's what a pilot's supposed to do. One wheel will touch down first, such that the plane will be tilted a little bit into the wind and then allowing the wind to push the other wheel down. If they tried to land flat in a crosswind, it might tip them up and turn them over. How much the pilot must aim away from the runway depends on the speed of the aircraft and the speed of the winds. If there was a 50 mile per hour perpendicular crosswind and the airplane was going 250 miles per hour, the mathematics say that you would have to point the aircraft about 11 and a half degrees into the wind in order to have it then arrive properly at the runway. There are factors that make some airports horrible for crosswinds, including runway direction, prevailing winds, and topography. Even more dangerous is when the winds are unpredictable. Either the direction of the wind keeps changing or the intensity. Those are very tricky because whatever position you put the aircraft in, you're going to have to correct for those sudden gusts and changes in direction. Another complicating factor is that if it's a sunny day with a big crosswind, of course, you have some up and down going thermals related to that heating that can make you bounce and so on. So those one wheel crosswind landings can be Sort of tricky, sort of touch and go, if you will. Just about every airport gets crosswinds. Most times you won't even notice. But when you do feel it, it can be scary. So it's the science of weather and that pilot's experience that saves you. I'm meteorologist Paul Goodlow. Paul, thank you so much. And there is a lot of wind in Southern California today. And when you combine that with very dry conditions, there is a high wildfire danger. So what we're seeing today is an offshore flow. So the source region for this wind is the desert areas of Nevada and also interior California. That dry air comes out over the mountains, then sinks down. And in that sinking motion, it warms and it also dries out even more. So when you've got already dry brush, and you have very low relative humidities, then you've got a recipe for disaster if there is a spark, and that is the concern today in Southern California, and it may continue to be uh, many times through the course of this winter. So let's talk about how Santa Ana winds work, and what you've got is a big area of high pressure in the west, and when they're very, very strong areas of high pressure, we get these extreme events. That's not what's happening today, but we are getting this offshore flow, that wind again coming out of the deserts, settling down into the areas near the ocean and warming up. And in addition to that, because the winds are strong, they're injecting a lot of oxygen into these potential fires, and that's how they can really explode in size in a very short period of time. So there's a look at the wind advisories that are now in effect in Southern California. Winds 20 to 30 miles per hour through this afternoon and early evening, gusting as high as 40, maybe 45 miles per hour. And then on top of that, you've got red flag warnings in effect. 
Now, what that means, obviously, is that you don't want to flip, flick cigarettes. Not that you ever want to do that, but certainly not in this case. That can be enough to cause fires. And we've seen that many times where fire popped up on a median along the highway where somebody flicked out a cigarette. So that's one thing to avoid. Also, mowing your lawn, that can start a fire. And even just driving on grass, if you were to pull off the road and onto the grass, that can be enough to start a fire. So a number of things to watch out for. That's going to be through 9 o'clock tonight. Alex, Jen, back to you. Hey, thank you so much, Carl. Well, wind was a big factor in this weekend storm that rocked parts of Maine. And you know what, Maine? You can be in, round, in for round two very soon. Yeah, up next, we're going to track snow as it heads into New England. This is a new storm system that could bring more than a half a foot of snow. Hey, Anthony. Hey, Melissa. How cool is it that you can save up to $35 when you open a Walmart credit card account this holiday season? Super cool. Hey, with all those great savings, you're going to need a bigger stocking. I'm way ahead of you. What? What? You'll get $25 back when you spend $75 on your new account. Then you can get another $10 when you spend $75 more. Santa loves me. How does he feel about me? Uh, he thinks you're okay. Walmart. More ways to Christmas joy. Ring, ring. Progresso. It's okay that your soup tastes like my homemade. It's our slow simmered vegetables and tender white meat chicken. Apology accepted. I'm watching you, soup people. Make it Progresso or make it yourself. I've always seen No-No on TV and I always wondered if it worked. And it's definitely, I can see what everybody talks about now. It's not a razor. It's not a laser. It's No-No from Radiancy, the number one hair removal system in the world. It's absolutely okay. no pain. Can't believe the difference, Al. It's almost hair free. No, no gives you no hair with no pain. Well, I saw it on TV and they said it was painless, right? right? I didn't really believe it, but now that I'm trying it, it feels completely painless. And now, no, no is better than ever. Introducing the new no, no pro. It's up to 35% more powerful. Imagine never having to shave again. I like a close shave. Absolutely. And this is better than that. I mean, it, it's gone. No more facial hair. No more embarrassment. I've always been self-conscious of my hairline, so putting my hair back, this will be perfect for me. And for that man in your life, there's no-no for him, too. It looks like, just like you've got a fresh wax, but, like, you don't have to go through all the pain. Call now, and we'll send you the cordless No-No Pro in your choice of colors. Featuring an LCD display, it comes with up to five treatment levels. Plus, we'll include everything you need to get rid of your unwanted hair. A set of Thermacon tips, specially designed for your face and body. A buffer pad to exfoliate and polish your skin. Plus, act now and we'll send you the No-No Travel Case as a free gift. And get this, you can try No-No risk-free for not 30 days, but 60 days with our triple guarantee. If you are not 100% satisfied, return it and we'll refund the purchase price, refund the shipping, and even pay the return postage. Try No-No risk-free today. I need to get myself one of these right now. Absolutely. <laughs> for your 60-day trial, go to no no Pro com or call 1-800-955-2390. That's 1-800-955-2390. I want to find one girl to have my brand to go on. I'm excited. I'm going to work for DBF. I'm going to kill this thing. There's a lot of responsibility. Maybe more than we were prepared for. This is an opportunity. Don't blow it. House of DBF, <laughs> Sunday at 10, only on E. Currently in our area, 79 degrees under cloudy skies. Tonight, partly cloudy, low 70. Winds east-northeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Thursday, partly cloudy, high 81. Winds east-northeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Thursday night, partly cloudy skies, low 65. Winds light and variable. Here's our seven-day outlook.
amazing starts here. The Weather Channel mornings. Get ready for a cold air invasion. An Arctic air mass is on the way, and it could bring some significant lake effect snow. Isn't it too early for this? <laughs> Never. Seems like it. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and thanks so much for watching us here on Weather Center Live. I'm Jennifer Lopez. And I'm Alex Wilson. I guess it depends on what part of the country you're from. That's here in sure. Georgia, definitely. But as I said, I went to Syracuse. And once the daylight savings time happened, just you like that, the we got weather. snow. <laughs> yep. Well, first, we've got plenty of rain to track. You are looking at it from parts of Texas all the way up into West Virginia and Virginia. Further up to the north, we have snow. And we'll talk more about that in a second. But I want to start with the rain and where it's coming down a little harder. Austin. And you've seen some light to moderate rain. Same for San Antonio. You can see a few heavier showers off towards the south. And it's been on the northwest or rather northeast side of Houston where we have seen some heavy rain. Now things beginning to lighten up onto parts of Interstate 69. That's where things were a little rough there at last check. About an hour ago we were seeing some heavy downpours there. So you were likely seeing not much of the road in front of you. You know what it's like trying to drive through some of those downpours. Nashville south side of town is where we've got some of that heaviest rain. And it is a soggy drive from Knoxville to Nashville at this hour. Jennifer? All right, let's talk about more storms to come and what's in store for the Northeast. Today, we've had a lot of clouds, but it's been not too bad with the temperatures in the 60s here in New York as well as into Boston. The colder air is due to arrive, and out ahead of it, we're going to find some rain and maybe even some snow. So let's talk about what to expect as we get into Thursday and Friday with a late week storm system that will eventually come into the Great Lakes. In fact, we're seeing it right now and all the way over into the Northeast. The clouds over us haven't really produced much in the form of rain. A few brief showers back over towards West Virginia. The moisture, though, is with this northern area of low pressure through the upper Midwest. Some of the blue is indicating some good significant snow north of Minneapolis. And then we've also been getting rates of snow about two inches in some locations across North Dakota already. We have a northern low combining it with the southern low in the south. They're all going to be moving towards the northeast. So they're going to go across the Great Lakes and end up in the northeast by Friday. And that's going to bring in rain along the coast. But the inland areas, the higher elevations, they're going to find that colder air in place so we may get some winter weather out of this. And then an upper level disturbance is going to help to energize the system and bring more moisture in. Tonight, we'll still look at the wintry side of this system through the upper Midwest. Watch out for a rain-snow mix in Minneapolis. And then for Chicago, it should all be rain for you, but a cold rain and rain throughout the day tomorrow in the Northeast. Now, on Friday, most of the 95 corridors should be in decent shape, but back into Buffalo and into Pittsburgh, now we're thinking you have a good chance of that rain mixing in with some snow for Friday. Alex? And with the talk of snow comes the talk of cold. So we've got to talk about some really low high temperatures. Minneapolis, you're one of the spots where those highs are going to be downright cold. No way to sugarcoat this one. Next week's Arctic outbreak will leave some of those highs below the freezing mark. Right now, it's 45 in Minneapolis. Not too bad. Upper 30s in Fargo, mid 30s in Minot, 56 in Rapid City. But look what's up to the north. We've got temperatures in the teens and 20s through parts of Canada. That cold air is going to make a run further off towards the south. And as that cold air pushes into the U.S., it's going to be parts of the northern plains, the Midwest, and the Northeast that especially get in on some of that very, very cold air, although it's going to be felt all the way down towards the Gulf Coast. Next Monday, temps 10 to 15 degrees below average for a lot of spots. Look at these highs, 23 in Bismarck on Tuesday, 38 in Chicago. Yeah, that's your high temperature. Get out those new jackets. Get them ready to go. Dallas, 51 next Wednesday. Low 60s, as good as it gets for New Orleans. So we're talking 10 to 20 degrees below average in a lot of spots. Kansas City will be around 37. If you were watching earlier, you heard Carl mention in a lot of spots we're going to be feeling the wind as well. Minneapolis, here's a look at your seven day. And boy, things are changing. We've got 48 for your high on Friday. That's the warmest day of the seven day because by the time we get into early next week, we'll start things off on Monday with snow and temps in the mid 30s, upper 20s. Those are your highs on Tuesday and Wednesday with lows in the mid-teens, Jen. Well, one of the most amazing weather stories of the week is happening right now in the Pacific Ocean. Typhoon Nuria is losing strength, but the energy will have a huge impact on the United States. We like this one so much that we brought in a team of experts to help break it down. Here's Tom Nizzle and Dr. Greg Postel. 
That's right. I mean, really, weather on the other side of the world can impact our weather right here, right now. And sometimes tropical cyclones moving into the jet stream can do just that. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, we've got a fantastic satellite image here that shows Nuri and how it transforms as it gets to higher latitudes. That's exactly right, Tom. You don't need a textbook to see this. Look at the satellite pictures right now. There's Typhoon Nuri in the West Pacific and see those clouds streaming way back. It's already coupling and mingling with the jet stream. And so some of those fast winds are already moving into parts of North America and giving the jet stream a little extra wiggle, a little bit more than it would otherwise have. And it's amazing to see this energy and see where it ends up in the Bering Sea. This is a major storm system. Yeah, it is a major storm system. And let's see how this can all happen, how the weather over there yeah. can impact the weather over here. Yeah, so let's go ahead and go to the big screen here. And Greg, this is your area of expertise. And I'm fascinated to see how tropical cyclone energy can actually force the jet stream when it gets to higher latitudes and produce changes in weather downstream in North America. Yeah, it is pretty cool. A lot of times what we see with these tri tropical cyclones moving north, the air flowing aloft at very high altitudes, about 30,000 feet, kind of punches up against the jet stream right there, strengthens it a little bit, and then cause little extra wiggles in the jet stream downstream from there, giving it a little extra kick and oftentimes we end up with a pattern that looks something like this. Now this pattern may have already been there, but maybe it's got a little bit more uh, oomph to it with the tropical cyclone help. And that oomph ends up in these big undulations. And I, you know, we spare no expense here, so I want to work with you on this. Yeah. And, and it's show not how spring, this, this is still winter, Tom. Oh, very good, yeah. I like that. So yeah. uh, what I'm gonna talk about is kind of how it all can happen sort of physically. Like okay. imagine I'm gonna be Nuri in the West Pacific. And where are you, Tom? I'm right say in Minneapolis, the heart of the continent. Okay, you like it cold, so this will be good for very you. Much. Okay, right? So I'm Typhoon Nuri right now, kind of giving the jet stream a little bit of a kick right in there. And so we're getting some more wiggles perhaps in North America already than we might have. But you know what? Nuri's gonna morph into a giant winter storm over the Bering Sea and you know what's gonna happen then. Oh wow, then you're gonna see big undulations in that jet stream and you're seeing those big waves right here. This is what we end up with in the atmosphere, isn't it? It is. And so let's go to what Nuri is gonna look like eventually in the coming few days over the North Pacific. And there is a powerful storm system System, drawing a lot of warm up air way up in high latitudes north of the Arctic Circle. Yeah, one of the most powerful we've seen on record. Well, you're going to see seas to 40 feet out there, commercial fishing, fishing interests going to have to stay in port, but this is going to drive a big undulation in the pattern here, isn't it? Yeah, and that cold air, some of the coldest air we've seen this season is going to be riding south across the northern plains. Tom, this is your favorite kind of weather. You know what might happen over the Great Lakes? Absolutely. You put this cold air over the still warm waters of the Great Lakes, probably an extended period of lake effect snow for that region there. And I'll tell you, look at how far south that cold air goes. There's no stopping it. A lot of times these Arctic air masses come south. They go all the way to the Gulf Coast, and there's no reason to think that this time will be anything different. Look at some of these numbers for next Tuesday. Well, 37 for a high in Chicago, 13 degrees below what we normally see. And by the time you get into Wednesday, the cold air is even going to be deeper, further down into the southern U.S. In parts of the Appalachians, 20 degrees colder than what we normally see. Atlanta, a high of 50, 15 degrees below normal. You and I are betting men. If we had to sort of pick one way or the other, if this forecast is going to verify yeah. colder or warmer, what would you think? I often see it go colder. I think you're going the same way, right? Same way. I think we're right on in this Absolutely. One. Watch out. It's going to get cold. Oh, they're too confident, I think. <laughs> and going colder, that uh, definitely got a lot of people's attention and uh, maybe just increased the price of chili ingredients. That's true. It'd be a good day for soup. Well, up next, a historic discovery, and it may not have happened without Superstorm Sandy. Plus, this hail, one of our top five videos, but not number one. See what is after your local on the 8th. Currently in our area, 79 degrees under cloudy skies. Tonight, partly cloudy, low 70, winds east-northeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Thursday, partly cloudy, high 81, winds east-northeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Thursday night, partly cloudy skies, low 65, winds light and variable. Here's our seven-day outlook.
the end of the day, my hands are beat up. Especially during the winter times, hands are splitting, cracking, making it very difficult to do my job. O'Keefe's Working Hands. Guaranteed relief for dry hands that crack and split. Best stuff we've ever used. It just works. Learn more at workinghands.com. There it is. This is where I met your grandpa. Right under this tree. Some things are worth holding on to. They're hugging the tree. That's why we got a Subaru. Was it that tree? Introducing the all-new Subaru Outback. Love, it's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. Let's get a head start on the holidays. Let's open something before Christmas. Not that. Those. And of course, a whole lot of these. Let's make merry, along with a few other things. Deck out that. Save all these and spread more of this. That's how to holiday. Let's do this. More saving. More doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. 100 count clear or multicolor incandescent lights, just $2.50. I was out for a bike ride. I didn't think I'd have a heart attack, but I did. I'm Mike, and I'm very much alive. Now my doctor recommends a Bayer aspirin regimen to help prevent another heart attack. Be sure to talk to your doctor before you begin an aspirin regimen. Why do you want to get everybody Spring Valley vitamins from Walmart? Because you need him to feel healthy for your big reunion. <coughs> because you need to feel the moves, not the years. Dance Team Captain 94. And because you need Grandpa to feel like he has more energy than they do. Shop the whole line of Spring Valley Vitamins now. Only at Walmart.com and Walmart. I'm only in my 60s. I've got a nice long life ahead. Big plans. So when I found out Medicare doesn't pay all my medical expenses, I looked at my options. Then I got a Medicare supplement insurance plan. If you're eligible for Medicare, you may know it only covers about 80% of your Part B medical expenses. The rest is up to you. Call now and find out about an AARP Medicare Supplement Insurance Plan insured by United Healthcare Insurance Company. Like all standardized Medicare Supplement Insurance Plans, it helps pick up some of what Medicare doesn't pay and could save you in out-of-pocket medical costs. To me, relationships matter. I've been with my doctor for 12 years. Now I know I'll be able to stick with them. With these types of plans, you'll be able to visit any doctor or hospital that accepts Medicare patients. Plus, there are no networks and virtually no referrals needed. So don't wait. Call now and request this free decision guide to help you better understand Medicare and which AARP Medicare supplement plan might be best for you. There's a wide range to choose from. We love to travel, and there's so much more to see. So we found a plan that can travel with us anywhere in the country. Join the millions of people who have already enrolled in the only Medicare supplement insurance plans endorsed by AARP, an organization serving the needs of people 50 and over for generations. Remember, all Medicare supplement insurance plans help cover what Medicare doesn't pay and could save you in out-of-pocket medical costs. Call now to request your free decision guide and learn more about the kinds of plans that will be here for you now and down the road. I have a lifetime of experience, so I know how important that is. Just like an interception. I bet you didn't see this one coming. Up your game with the new Fritos Chili Pizza. A large for $12. Add a mega chocolate chip cookie for just $5 more. Better ingredients, better pizza, better football. Papa John's. Hurricane Sandy changed the landscape of New York and New Jersey, and now the side effects of the superstorm have led to a historic discovery. WNBC's Brian Thompson reports. It may not look like much more than a pile of old timbers, but this wreckage could just possibly be that of this ship, the Ayrshire, which foundered off Squan Beach 164 years ago, but launched a revolution in nearshore life-saving. If this is indeed that vessel, it had the fortune of wrecking right in front of a life-saving station equipped with the 
life car to test and they were very, very successful. The life car looks like this, and on that freezing January day in 1850, 201 of the 202 immigrants and crew on board the Ayrshire were brought ashore to safety with a device never used before, but used often after. This wreckage was found buried under some 20 feet in the sand by a construction crew building a steel wall to protect brick and manaloking from a future sandy. It actually broke one of the pile drives drivers being used on this project. It's never washed up in all the prior storms. After Sandy, it didn't wash up. Now we find it, you know, two years after Sandy. But it is not clear yet what this wreckage comes from. Any number of ships were lost along this stretch of the shore, including this one, the Cornelius Grinnell, also right off Squan Beach. The state will send in an archaeologist with ground-penetrating radar to further investigate in the next week or so. But if it is a ship, and not, for example, a barge, there could be a small treasure trove of personal items dating back to the mid and early 19th century. They are, in fact, time capsules. Whatever happens to this wreckage, and if it's of historical value, it won't be left here. The state DEP says this steel wall, except maybe here, will be finished on time before winter. In Brick, Brian Thompson, News 4 New York. How neat is that? Yeah, it's an amazing discovery, that's for sure. All right, we got some amazing videos we to sure show do. you. It is time for our top five. We're staying around the world and actually beyond. But we start here on solid ground in Lubbock, Texas, to be exact. It has been a soggy day here across uh, the Lubbock area. This was actually yesterday. And one fast driver. Yeah, here. slow down. Slow, take it in. Ta you know, yeah. it, it, that ponding, those, those little puddles, they can get you. Ease up on the pedal there. Well, we had almost two inches of rain come down, and that was record rainfall in Lubbock. Up next, we head to the land down under, actually to South Wales, which was tumbled by hail. You can hear it, and hopefully it didn't damage the car there. Yeah, never a good thing when you get that large hail. Hopefully it stayed about this size. You know the driver in there is keeping his fingers crossed. <laughs> That, that's as big as those hailstones get. Number three takes us to West Virginia where an officer was able to capture a rare meteor shower on his dash cam. This is from Sergeant Luke Thomas of Benwood, West Virginia's Police Department, and he was on AMHQ this morning talking about it, and he said he gets to see cool stuff up in the sky. Hey, that third shift, you get some uh, some good stories, I'm sure. Oh, yes. <laughs> Number two, you want to talk about a queasy feeling. Amsterdam's crosswinds Oof. caught this jet, jet to briefly touch down, and then the landing was diverted, and we they land. said... No, 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 never mind. Let's, let's go. Let's go around one more time to make and sure it's And if you're with me, one. if you're sitting next to me, you're like, oh! My goodness, I'm holding your hand and squeezing it a little harder. Ah, uh, they landed safely though. That's definitely some good news. All right, number one, we go up to the sun. You see these black spots? Well, one of the that's one of the largest blacks or the largest sunspots ever recorded since 1990, and it caused some solar flares. And these are, look at some of the flares. Yeah, you can see some of these massive solar flares. You can see that in that picture. How, Ooh, I mean, this one. is, I mean, literally out of this world <laughs> video, but we always love getting these shots from the solar system. And it just doesn't look like the surface of the sun it there. It does not. Well, we'd love to see your videos from outer space or here on Earth. You can upload them anytime at weather.com slash photos. Beautiful and rare weather that most people don't get to see until now. You've got to stick around because we have something really special for you after the break. That's right, Carl Parker. He's special, so we're going to bring him back. And he's here to talk about the winter weather, the cold stuff that's coming our way, and maybe even some lake effects now. And he's going to do it with a smile. So don't worry about that. Let's take you to D.C. as we lead you into your local on the 8th. Day after Election Day, much quieter. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna draw something up new. Wait a minute. Wait, the quarterback. Share what you love with who you love. <laughs> Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. They're great. Ever since Daryl's wife started using Gain Flings, their laundry smells more amazing than ever. Uh, honey, isn't that the dog's towel? <laughs> hey, me towel, Sue towel. More Gain Scent plus Oxy Boost and Febreze for three big things in one Gain Fling. Try with matching scent boosters too. 
tomorrow. A Weather Channel first, the Winter Weather Prep Rally, a day dedicated to prepping and surviving winter's worst. Best advice, try not to travel. In the morning, you've got our winter weather outlook. And at night, this is an incredibly deadly time of year. Yeah, it's brutal. Watch the Winter Weather Prep Rally. Starts tomorrow morning on the Weather Channel. CNBC Wednesday nights, we're wheeling and dealing with Shark Tank at 8 and 9 Eastern and the Car Chasers at 10 on the fastest growing network in prime time, CNBC. Currently in our area, 79 degrees under cloudy skies. Tonight, partly cloudy, low 70, winds east-northeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Thursday, partly cloudy, high 81, winds east-northeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Thursday night, partly cloudy skies, low 65, winds light and variable. Here's our seven-day outlook. Theraflu starts to get to work in your body in just five minutes. Theraflu breaks you free from your worst cold and flu symptoms. Theraflu, serious power. Remember the hassle of vacuuming before the Dyson DC-59 motorhead? Before our direct drive cleaner head increased brush power to outclean the five best-selling full-size vacuums across carpets and hard floors without the hassle of a cord. One car travels towards an intersection with wipers that streak and clog, while another travels towards the same intersection with wiper blades that don't let them see clearly. But between them, the Michelin Man with Michelin Stealth Wiper Blades, a revolution in wiper blade technology, combining smart flex construction for superior windshield contact with proven hybrid blade design for clog-free performance in rain, ice, and snow, helping you steer clear for the road ahead. Michelin Stealth Wiper Blades, a better way forward. Getting record snowfall. Radars indicate there's been flooding throughout the area. We're getting hail the size of golf balls. Maglite. Turn your light on, America. Hurry, there's a hot offer for heartburn sufferers. Now try Zantac free at ZantacOffers.com. Hurry, it's free this week only. No pill relieves heartburn faster. Get Zantac free at ZantacOffers.com. You pay your auto insurance premium every month on the dot. You're like the poster child for paying on time. And then one day, you tap the bumper of a station wagon. No big deal, until your insurance company jacks up your rates. You freak out. What good is having insurance if you get punished for using it? Hey, insurance companies, newsflash. At Benjamin Franklin Plumbing, we can quickly take care of any plumbing need. From broken water heaters to shower fixtures and everything in between. Our trained and trusted experts are focused entirely on plumbing, so we can get you back to your life faster. You're right on time. Call today and get a diagnostic and evaluation service call for only $37. If there is any delay, it's you we pay. Welcome back to QVC. Here's a great gift idea. It's perfect for that person on your list who loves to bake. In fact, it's a must have in my kitchen when I get together with my niece and nephew and we make sweet treats for Santa and all of his reindeer. <laughs> over 50% with five screenings for $149. Call now at 800-393-7147. See the weather like never before. Look at this. Listen to that. Amazing starts here. The Weather Channel Mornings.
Welcome back to Weather Center Live. I'm Carl Parker, and the feature that we have been talking about earlier this week is now finally coming down into the Northern Plains. And along with it, we are getting some light snow now. It's going to pick up a bit later in the week. Here is the upper feature right in there. There's a little spin there, and there's another one behind that. And they're both dropping down now into the uh, into parts of Minnesota as well as into North Dakota. Not a lot of snow expected in these areas. Talking about lighter snow across 35 back towards Brainerd, also getting a bit of snow around Bemidji, and then we expect to see a little more into Fargo this evening, mixing in with rain. So there is the forecast in Fargo. That rain-snow mix changes over to all snow later tonight, and then we clear out uh, overnight tonight and should be a pretty good-looking day tomorrow. So again, not a tremendous amount of snow. It's going to be about 1 to 3 in the northernmost part of Wisconsin, well north of 94, and not anywhere near Green Bay or Milwaukee. So here's the the model forecast showing this area of low pressure as it drops down into the western lakes early tomorrow morning and we get some more snow there but not much in the way of accumulation and a bit of a mix in the UP and northern lower Michigan. Then that low comes over into the eastern lakes. A secondary low develops. That one is actually going to get stronger. We're going to begin to see a wintry mix in parts of New York and northern New England. And then that's really going to increase going through the day on Friday. So the heaviest of snow is likely going to be in largely unpopulated areas of northern Maine. But Caribou getting hit with snow, we think, for the better part of the day on Friday. So here's a look at the total amount of accumulation we're expecting some snow right around Syracuse as well as into the Tug Hill Plateau and the Adirondacks. Northern parts of the Green and White Mountains getting a few inches. Little more there in northern Maine as mentioned about five to eight and maybe a little stripe of more than eight inches of snow. So there's Buffalo talking about a rain snow mix on Friday. Then we'll see things at least drying out over the weekend, but some lingering clouds, temperatures in the 40s. And then up into Caribou, our big day is going to be Friday. That's going to be 34, some snow coming down for the better part of the day. Then we clear out on Saturday, and there is the hourly forecast in Caribou. Moderate snow uh, continues for much of the day, starting to taper off, we think, late in the day there on Friday. Alex, Jen, back to you. Thank you so much, Carl. And hey, we want you to tune in all day tomorrow. We are hosting our winter prep rally. We've got car care and pet care and what clothes to wear. We'll have everything you need to know to get you and your family ready for winter because it's coming. It all starts <laughs> at 530 on Wake Up With Al, and that is 530 a.m. All Hence, right. wake up with Al. That sounds good. We'll be up watching it for sure. Well, they're called blue jets, electrical discharges that blast into the sky from the top of a thunderstorm. They're hard to see with the naked eye, but if you are watching the Weather Channel tonight, you can catch them on Strangest Weather on Earth. An astonishing beam of vivid blue light bursting 43 miles upwards into the atmosphere. It's a spectacular natural event known as a blue jet. Blue jets tend to go from the tops of thunderstorms up in a conical shape. Very, very bizarre, crazy type of lightning. Incredibly, the first recording of them was taken from an aircraft as recently as 1994. Very few images of blue jets have ever been caught on camera. Blue jets are extremely rare, but for those who do witness them, they're unforgettable. And check out wild weather every night this week at 8 o'clock right here on the Weather Channel. And coming up in our next hour of Weather Center Live, strange lights over Chicago, but this was no meteor. Yeah, we're going to clear up all the confusion and explain what people saw up in the sky here in the Windy City. We got tricked. We Don't did. worry, Chicago, you weren't the only <laughs> ones. Let's take a look at the Windy City where we're also talking about a cool down headed your way into early next week. We've got more on the Arctic invasion in 60 seconds. Currently in our area, 79 degrees under cloudy skies.
Tonight, partly cloudy, low 70. Winds east-northeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Thursday, partly cloudy, high 81. Winds east-northeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Thursday night, partly cloudy skies, low 65. Winds light and variable. Here's our seven-day outlook. sunshine here in the south another wet dreary day but this rain is actually a good thing for the Lone Star State so we're going to show you where it is heading and how long it's going to last and get ready another arctic outbreak is coming it's bringing bitter cold temperatures even lake effect snow coming up the cities that could spend an entire week below freezing it's like that party crasher that doesn't bring anything good along <laughs> well from the weather channel headquarters in atlanta you are watching weather center live Hi there. Happy Wednesday to you. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Alex Wilson. And I'm Jennifer Lopez. And today for Dave Schwartz. Now, if you thought it was cold last week, well, get ready. Oh, yeah. Another Arctic blast is coming. And this one is just as big. And it's going to last even longer. So this one's got staying power. We're going to show you when it'll start to move in in just a minute. First, though, we've got to talk about that rain into parts of the Southern Plains. Still a soaker into some areas. This is a look at a time lapse of Dallas. So this is throughout the day. And you can see things really did not change much for the city of Dallas. You had the rain and the cloud cover. Overall, a dreary Wednesday. Jen? Yeah, that rain has just been sticking across the Metroplex. Now, it's been a little heavier towards the southern edge of Dallas and down towards Houston. But the rain, you can see it up here into Tyler, even towards Mount Pleasant. So right along 30 and 20 across East Texas and down 45. In fact, as you look from Houston up to the north, it's been really filling in. And it continues back over towards Austin and down into San Antonio. So heavy rain at time. And that extends all the way up into Middle Tennessee. This is all associated with a front that is bringing the heavier rain over into Nashville. And we can see it just off towards the east, not quite into Knoxville. But this system is going to slowly be pushing towards the south and southeast. And it does have its eyes set on Atlanta by early tomorrow morning. And rain is in the forecast with scattered showers around. Temperatures, though, should stay in the 60s behind this as we get into Friday and Saturdays when the cooler air comes. Water vapor loop just shows that moisture right along the front. The purples indicated in the cloud tops. We can see that rain all the way from deep south Texas up into the southern Appalachians. Now as it pushes to the east tomorrow, it's going to break up a lot of the rain. So we don't expect soaking rain over the deep south, but we will anticipate some scattered showers. In fact, the heaviest rain will really be found from Houston down to the south, where some areas could be able to pick up anywhere from one to two inches of additional rain as we go through the day tomorrow. And again, it should taper off as we head towards Friday. Alex. Thank you, Jennifer. We've got to talk about the snow now because, yep, we're going to see some snowflakes again into parts of the Great Lakes and Northeast. This is a storm that's going to affect us for the late part of the week. So let's talk about where. Well, right now we're seeing the snow up into parts of northern Minnesota, far northern sections and northwest parts of the state of Wisconsin. You can see near Minneapolis, Rice Lake, it is rain that's falling. But in Minneapolis, as we look forward in time, you can see by midnight, we do expect some rain and snow to be mixed across the Minneapolis area. So the rain now will transition to more of a mix by the time you're heading to bed. Let's look at the bigger picture. Right now, there's where the snow is. Parts of North Dakota, Minnesota, into the state of Wisconsin. Part of this northern storm system. We've also got a storm system off to the south. And what these two are going to do, join forces like two superheroes. And as it does, they, of course, strengthen. You know those are the rules when superheroes join forces. Well, we've got that moisture being pulled to the north as that storm system strengthens. And then we've got an upper level disturbance. That's going to help to energize the storm, add a little muscle. So we will see the rain and snow extend into parts of the northeast by the time we get into our Friday. Tonight, it's snow from Fargo into northern parts of Wisconsin. Rain and snow showers in the areas where you see the pink. Tomorrow, generally rain into parts of the northeast. But look what happens as we get into our Friday. We're we're seeing the rain and snow across a lot of the east, even snow up into parts of New England and parts of Maine. So 
Look at that. You can even see that snow, Jennifer, into parts of the southern Appalachians. Oh, goodness. Well, another Arctic outbreak is coming, and this one will stretch all the way from the Rockies to the, to the northeast. And our storm specialist, Carl Parker, is in the lab to let us know when it's going to start. So, Carl, we're going to start to see it maybe late this weekend, but it looks like it's going to last for a long time. Yeah, another big push is going to come in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And what's interesting about that is part of what is driving it is actually sitting now in the west. Western Pacific, not very far away from Japan. And I'll show you that in a moment. First of all, let's talk about the flow across the U.S. right now. This is the water vapor loop in the last 12 hours, and you've got what is predominantly a westerly flow. We also call that a zonal flow. It's a latitudinal flow, and when you have that, you don't tend to have big intrusions of really cold air, which we are not going to see that much of in the next couple of days. There is a little dip here. It's going to come down in the next couple of days around the lakes and the northeast and that dip in the jet stream is concordant with these pushes of cold air so they work together it's not that one causes the other it's that they're working together and it's a really good proxy for where the coldest of air is then we see some moderation in the plains going into the weekend and then we're going to watch a big mass of cold air really start building there in Canada late in the weekend and it begins to push down Monday Tuesday and Wednesday and again this is is the feature that is associated with what's going on in the Western Pacific. So there's a typhoon out there. We've been talking about that last couple of days. It's really weakening right now, but there's still a tremendous amount of warm and humid air that's associated with that that's going to lift right up and into Alaska. So by the time we get into Sunday, You've got this big push of warmer air in Alaska that's altering the wind flow around Alaska and Western Canada and helping to drive that cold air down through central parts of Canada. So we begin to see that again on Sunday. Monday really comes down into the Northern Plains. Tuesday overspreads much of the Midwest and the Plains and then continues to move into the East on Wednesday. So what does that mean in terms of temperature? Well, we're certainly gonna be below average. Uh, by the time we go into two Tuesday, 38 degrees in Chicago, that's minus 12 relative to average, and then North Platte, 33 degrees. And whenever you have a big change in temperature, you have a big change in pressure as well. Temperature and pressure are very closely related. And when you have a big change in pressure, the atmosphere creates a lot of wind to try to balance things out. So it's going to be windy as well. And then you've got that cold air overspreading most of the eastern two thirds of the country on Wednesday, 50 in Atlanta, 37 for the hot in Kansas City. It is going to feel like fall. Ladies, back to you. Oh, yes, it is. Maybe even a little like winter for some people mm -hmm, who say, sure. hey, here in Atlanta, we don't like it that cold. Well, yesterday, we told you about a fireball in the sky above Chicago, and today we know exactly what caused it. It was not space junk. Yeah, we got tricked, but an entire town, meanwhile, in Hawaii, bracing for disaster. So we're going to head out there next. Hello, I'm an idle potato farmer and our big idle potato truck is still missing. So my buddy here is going to help me find it. There you go! It's out there somewhere spreading the word about America's favorite potato, Heart Healthy Idaho Potatoes, and the American Heart Association's Go Red for Women campaign. If you see it, I hope you'll let us know. Always look for the grown in Idaho seal. Reliability is now an American thing. Introducing the all new Chrysler 200, America's import. I want to find one girl to help my brand to go on. I'm excited. I'm going to work for DBS. I'm going to kill this thing. There's a lot of responsibility. Maybe more of this. We weren't prepared for. This is an opportunity. Don't blow it. House of DBF, <laughs> Sunday at 10, only on E. Currently in our area, 79 degrees under cloudy skies.
tonight. Partly cloudy, low 70. Winds east-northeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Thursday, partly cloudy, high 81. Winds east-northeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Thursday night, partly cloudy skies, low 65. Winds light and variable. Here's our seven-day outlook. See the weather like never before. Look at this! Listen to that! Amazing starts here. The Weather Channel mornings. Can you start tomorrow? Tomorrow we're book solid. We close on the house tomorrow. Tomorrow we go live. Everybody. It's a day full of promise. And often that day arrives by train. Big day today. Even bigger one tomorrow. CSX, how tomorrow moves. It's crazy at our house for the holidays. Everybody shows up. <laughs> we shop at Burlington because we're getting the kids ready. We're getting the house ready. Great prices, dresses, shoes, wine glasses. I got everything at Burlington. Amazing. Hershey's Spreads. Bring the delicious taste of Hershey's chocolate to anything. Everything. With Hershey's Spreads, the possibilities are delicious. See this? It shows the pressure points at my tired, achy feet. I had no clue I was putting this kind of stress on my feet. I have flat feet. I found this out at the free Dr. Schultz Foot Mapping Center at Walmart. In less than two minutes, I got my foot map and my custom number. I'm a 440. I'm a 210. 340. That number matched the Dr. Schultz Custom Fit Orthotic Inserts with just the right support to help relieve stress on my feet. I'm a believer. Go to drscholes.com for locations and save $10. We are so glad you stayed with us here on Weather Center Live. Right now, we want to get you caught up on all your weather headlines. And we'll start with an update out of Maine, where the snowstorm over the weekend still is causing major problems. At the peak, more than 100,000 customers were without power. And as of this morning, just under 30,000 still remain without power three days after the storm. Meanwhile, remember that fireball up in the sky that was spotted over Chicago on Monday night? You know what it was? It wasn't a meteor. It wasn't even space junk. It ended up being a flashy publicity stunt. What? Have you heard of Red Bull? Yes. Well, they have an Air Force, uh, Red Bull Air Force, and these are guys that jump out of airplanes with flares shooting from their shoes. Well, they were drifting towards North Avenue Beach. I don't think they were really drifting. They were probably, probably going fast. Yeah. Right. Um, the company admitted yesterday that they were behind the mysterious fireball. Slow clap for yeah. you. Well Good played, job. Red Bull. <laughs> well, the lava flow has paused on the big island of Hawaii. This aerial footage shot yesterday of lava from Kilauea Volcano showed very little activity. And that's welcome news for Pahoa. That's that town of about 950 people that's been on alert for weeks. Now, even though the lava has actually paused near the town for now, at least, geologists are still monitoring lava outbreaks farther upslope. Earlier today, Maria LaRosa sat down with a professor to show what this means for the town of Pahoa and the people who live there. Dr. Joseph Dufick, Associate Professor for School of Earth and Atmospheric Sciences at Georgia Tech is here. Doctor, thank you so much for being with us. This has fascinated us for a long time following it from the beginning. Why has it slowed? It's, it's slowed because the, the flux of magma coming out of the system has, has changed slightly and this is very extended uh, from the vent actually. And so it's slowed because it's cooling down and freezing. Um, that doesn't mean that the magma has really stopped. It's still continuing to inflate the lava flow, which means it's flowing underneath the crust that's okay. frozen but the, the very far point of this tip of the lava flow has actually stopped. Which is why the scientists are still looking upstream to see what's happening there. And what is happening? Well, it's, it's magma still coming out of the ground, but you can't always see it. It's kind of formed this carapace of, of rock that's basically frozen out, and magma's moving underneath it, uh, taking advantage of this rift system that's moving to the northeast. So we know, you know, Hawaii is made of rock from lava and we see it all over right now. There's so much of it. What's ahead for the residents there? I mean, is it possible to move it, clean up after it? How do they, how do they move on? It's very difficult. Basically all of Hawaii is a big lava flow, right. lava flows. And um, so they probably won't move it. Um, just kind of live around it. Um, after a few years, some plants will start to grow on the top. Tens of years from now, larger plants will grow and, and just adapt to it probably. 
Um, you, it's it's tough for the residents there, for the people in Pahoa. It's a little little town on a big island. What's next for them? Well, uh, you know, the, the lava flow could completely stall out as it has now. Um, it's possible that some of these other fingers could could reactivate uh, along the flank. Um, so it's uncertain at this stage, and no one can really predict. Um, at least at this stage, they should have plenty of warning, though, if, if it does advance towards the town. Are there things that we're learning from this right now that maybe we didn't know before? Uh, a little bit. Uh, you know, this is an interesting eruption. It's like a lot of, uh, of these flank eruptions. This volcano in particular is being well monitored by the Hawaii Volcano Observatory, the U.S. Geological Survey, and they're, they're the best in the world at what they do. And, uh, and so they have quite a bit of monitors on this volcano. Is this kind of lava flow an indication of anything down the road for for the island. Uh, no, this is kind of a standard operating procedure. You know, th there'll probably be more um, eruptions and lava flows along the sort of risk system as we go forward in the future. Okay, Dr. Jufik, thank you so much for your time. Fascinating stuff. All right. Well, up next, there's scary moments for anyone to see. A plane caught up in the crosswind. We're going to break down the science like only we can and show you why these landings happen and how the pilots are prepared. Plus, speaking of the winds. Parts of the West Coast need to be on alert. A look at how long the dangerous Santa Ana winds will be a problem. And let's take you up to the Northwest, take a look at your forecast. You've been seeing rain showers around parts of Western Washington, now moving into the Seattle area. Portland, most of that has been off to your north. Seattle, here's your forecast. Morning rain Thursday, but lots of sunshine to end your week. Hey, Melissa, how cool is it that you can save up to $35 when you open a Walmart credit card account this holiday season? Super cool. Hey, with all those great savings, you're going to need a bigger stocking. I'm way ahead of you. What? What? You'll get $25 back when you spend $75 on your new account. Then you can get another 10 when you spend $75 more. Santa loves me. How does he feel about me? Uh, he thinks you're okay. Walmart. More ways to Christmas joy. Let's get a head start on the holidays. Let's open something before Christmas. Not that. Those. And of course, a whole lot of these. Let's make merry, along with a few other things. Deck out that. Save all these and spread more of this. That's how to holiday. Let's do this. More saving. More doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. 100 count clear or multicolor incandescent lights, just $2.50. The Dueler tires on Terrence Knighton's truck are engineered to be Bridgestone's best SUV tires. And now they have an 80,000 mile tread wear warranty. I guess we're gonna be here a while. First time on a treadmill? What are you saying? I'm just saying. With an 80,000 mile tread wear warranty, the Dueler tires are Bridgestone's best SUV tires. Go to BridgestoneTire.com to find a Bridgestone dealer near you. Pizza maker, playmaker. I can't believe I waited 30 years to put Fritos on a pizza. Took me 22 years to make it to the NFL. That's counting when you were just a baby. Yeah, baby that wasn't playing in the NFL. That breaks my heart. Sad. Beef, chili, cheddar, mozzarella, and original Fritos corn chips. Up your game with the new Fritos chili pizza. A large for $12. Add a mega chocolate chip cookie for just $5 more. Better ingredients, better pizza. Better football. Papa John's. Tomorrow, a Weather Channel first, the Winter Weather Prep Rally, a day dedicated to prepping and surviving winter's worst. Best advice, try not to travel. In the morning, you've got our winter... Esurance was born online, which means fewer costs, which saves money. Their customer experience is virtually paperless, which saves paper, which saves money. They have smart online tools, so you only pay for what's right for you, which saves money. They settle claims quickly, which saves time, which saves money. They drive an all-hybrid claims fleet, which saves gas, which saves money. They were born online and built to save money, which means when they save, you save. Because that's how it should work in the modern world. Esurance, backed by Allstate. Click or call. At Benjamin Franklin Plumbing, we can quickly take care of any plumbing need. From broken water heaters to shower fixtures and everything in between. Our trained and trusted experts are focused entirely on plumbing, so we can get you back to your life faster. You're right on time. Call today and get a diagnostic and evaluation service call for only $37. If there is any delay, it's you we pay. Tumiso only.com. 
There's no obligation, so call toll-free at 1-800-200-6120. See the weather like never before. Look at this! Listen to that! Amazing starts here. The Weather Channel Mornings. Currently in our area, 75 degrees with light rain. Tonight, some clouds, low 70. Winds east-northeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Thursday, partly cloudy, high 81. Winds east-northeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Thursday night, a few clouds from time to time, low 65. Winds light and variable. Here's our seven-day outlook. If you've ever been on a jet caught in a crosswind, you know it's not a good feeling. But pilots are trained to handle this sort of thing, and the experts say that wild approaches, like the one you're seeing right here, aren't that unusual. Meteorologist Paul Goodlow explains. No doubt, it's oh wow video. A plane faced with challenging crosswinds. In this case, it's at Madeira Airport in Portugal, known to be one of the worst in the world for crosswinds. It's, you know, one runway and it's wedged in between the ocean and the mountains and it's 200 feet up, so they get stronger winds there. As that wind howls across the airport, there are things that pilots do to keep the plane from going off the runway. The airplane, as it approaches, just like a boat, would have to cheat into the wind so that it's now approaching the runway with a slight angle. That'll allow then the wind to drift them back toward the runway. Otherwise, the wind would push you off to the right of the runway. He's approaching like this. He pushes the rudder in order to straighten the nose and he dips the wing. And lands on one wheel. It looks dramatic, but it's what a pilot's supposed to do. One wheel will touch down first, such that the plane will be tilted a little bit into the wind and then allowing the wind to push the other wheel down. If they tried to land flat in a crosswind, it might tip them up and turn them over. How much the pilot must aim away from the runway depends on the speed of the aircraft and the speed of the winds. If it was a 50 mile per hour perpendicular crosswind and the airplane was going 250 miles per hour, the mathematics say that you would have to point the aircraft about 11 and a half degrees into the wind in order to have it then arrive properly at the runway. There are factors that make some airports horrible for crosswinds, including runway direction, prevailing winds, and topography. Even more dangerous is when the winds are unpredictable. Either the direction of the wind keeps changing or the intensity. Those are very tricky because whatever position you put the aircraft in, you're going to have to correct for those sudden gusts and changes in direction. Another complicating factor is that if it's a sunny day with a big crosswind, of course you have some up and down going thermals related to that heating that can make you bounce and so on. So those one wheel crosswind landings can be Sort of tricky, sort of touch and go, if you will. Just about every airport gets crosswinds. Most times you won't even notice. But when you do feel it, it can be scary. So it's the science of weather and that pilot's experience that saves you. I'm meteorologist Paul Goodlow. Paul, thank you so much. Wind is also an issue in Southern California today. And let's talk about the Santa Ana winds and the concern for wildfires. So you've got this air that's coming out of the deserts in interior California and Nevada. And that dry wind then comes over the mountains and sinks down into Southern California. And that sinking motion warms the air even further and dries it out even more. So you've already got very dry brush there in California. California because of the drought, but then you've got relative humidities that drop down to 10% or lower, and that is a recipe for fire, and that is the big worry today, and I'm sure it will be uh, through the course of the winter. So let's talk about the larger picture and how the Santa Ana winds work, and what you have is an area of high pressure centered over the interior west, and the flow around that 
then driving that again very dry air out of the deserts into Southern California where it sinks and warms and dries out. And in addition to that, because it is very windy, what it will do is inject more oxygen into a developing fire and for that reason can really literally fuel the fire and help it to grow very large in a short period of time. So that's the worry today. There are wind advisories in effect in the mountains there, Los Angeles, Ventura counties, right down into Orange and San Diego counties. Winds 20 to 30 miles per hour and gusting higher. And then red flag warnings as well in all of those same areas. Now, what does that mean? That means you have to be extra careful. You don't want to flick cigarettes. You shouldn't do that anyway, but especially in this case. And we've seen a lot of fires that get started right on the median in between the highways there as people flick a cigarette out and then suddenly you've got a conflagration. Another thing you don't want to do, you don't want to mow the lawn. Sparks can come out of the lawnmower and you don't want to drive your car over grass. That too can be enough to get a grass fire going. So please be very careful. That warning going through nine o'clock tonight. Alex, Jen back to you. Thank you so much, Carl. Well, wind was a big factor in this past weekend storm that rocked parts of Maine. They could be in for round two very soon, but you know, we do have some good news for Maine now, less than 8,000 people without power. So that is definitely a swing in the right direction. Well, up next, it looks like New England could see more snow on the way. Some areas could even see up to a half a foot. Married. Does it matter? You do that for me? Really? Yeah, I'd like that. Who are you talking to? Uh, it's Jake from State Farm. Sounds like a really good deal. Jake from State Farm at 3 in the morning? Who is this? It's, it's Jake from State Farm. What are you wearing, Jake from State Farm? Uh, khakis. She sounds hideous. Well, she's a guy, so. Another reason more people stay with State Farm. Get to a better state. I've always seen No No on TV and I always wondered if it worked. And it's definitely, I can see what everybody talks about now. It's not a razor. It's not a laser. It's No No from Radiancy, the number one hair removal system in the world. It's absolutely okay. no pain. Can't believe the difference, Al. It's almost hair free. No No gives you no hair with no pain. Well, I saw it on TV and they said it was painless, right? right. I didn't really believe it, but. Now that I'm trying it, it feels completely painless. And now, No-No is better than ever. Introducing the new No-No Pro. It's up to 35% more powerful. Imagine never having to shave again. I like a close shave. Absolutely. And this is better than that. I mean, it, it's gone. No more facial hair. No more embarrassment. I've always been self-conscious of my hairline, so putting my hair back, this will be perfect for me. And for that man in your life, there's No-No for him too. It looks like, just like you've got a fresh wax, but like you don't have to go through all the pain. Call now and we'll send you the cordless No-No Pro in your choice of colors. Featuring an LCD display, it comes with up to five treatment levels. Plus, we'll include everything you need to get rid of your unwanted hair. A set of Thermacon tips, specially designed for your face and body. A buffer pad to exfoliate and polish your skin. Plus, act now and we'll send you the No-No Travel Case as a free gift. And get this, you can try No-No risk-free for not 30 days, but 60 days with our triple guarantee. If you are not 100% satisfied, return it and we'll refund the purchase price, refund the shipping, and even pay the return postage. Try No-No risk-free today. I need to get myself one of these right now. Absolutely. <laughs> for your 60-day trial, go to NoNoPro.com or call 1-800-955-2390. That's 1-800-955-2390. Tomorrow, a Weather Channel first, the Winter Weather Prep Rally, a day dedicated to prepping and surviving winter's worst. Best advice, try not to travel. In the morning, you've got our winter weather outlook. And at night, this is an incredibly deadly time of year. Yeah, it's brutal. Watch the Winter Weather Prep Rally, starts tomorrow morning on the Weather Channel. Currently in our area, 75 degrees with light rain.
Tonight, some clouds, low 70. Winds east-northeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Thursday, partly cloudy, high 81. Winds east-northeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Thursday night, a few clouds from time to time, low 65. Winds light and variable. Here's our seven-day outlook. Every Sunday, a new tale of weather legend. American Supernatural, Sunday nights at 10 on the Weather Channel. Get ready for a cold air invasion. That Arctic air mass is on the way and it could bring some significant lake effect snow. The Arctic is coming. The Arctic is coming. <laughs> here we go again. Well, thanks so much for joining us here on Weather Center Live. I'm Jennifer Lopez. And I'm Alex Wilson. We're going to let you know when that Arctic outbreak will begin. But first, we have had plenty of rain to track throughout the day. So let's take a look at the radar and where that rain is coming down. Really from parts of Texas all the way up into Kentucky, Tennessee, and West Virginia. Even Southwest Virginia getting in on some of that. Some light to moderate rain falling between Austin and San Antonio. The heaviest rain now lifting well off to the north and east of the Houston area, save for this little area on the southeast side of town. That's where we could see some heavier downpours that could impact you if you're leaving work a little bit early today. Up into parts of eastern Texas, approaching the Jasper area, the rain will start the heaviest rain at this point off towards your south and west. Here's a look at the state of Tennessee, Nashville, some of that heavier rain off towards the south of you, but traveling around town for that late day commute. I know a lot of folks live outside of the city, so this is going to be a little bit of a slow go for you. Expect travel on 40 to be slowed at times thanks to those rain showers. Jennifer. Okay, well, let's talk about where this rain is going to go, and it eventually has its eyes set in on New York City as well as Boston. We've had a lot of clouds over the day, but not much in the form of rain. In fact, temperatures have been okay in the 60s, fairly comfortable and above average readings where you should be in the 50s. But we are going to be looking out for rain to move into the Boston and New York and Philadelphia areas. The radar right now doesn't show much, although we do see all those clouds over us. In the upper Midwest, it's a different story as that snow has been breaking out in North Dakota and also into northern and central Minnesota. Eventually, it'll come closer to Minneapolis. Not a big snow event for you, but this area of low pressure, this northern low, we're going to watch it bring a rain-snow mix into the Twin Cities. That low meets up with the southern one and they all are going to be converging into the northeast. So we are looking for a good chance of rain, especially on Thursday in the northeast. And then some areas even on Friday are going to see a wintry mix. So let's talk a little bit more about this. Now for tonight, we'll see that system in the northern brand, the northern low kind of move through the upper Midwest. It doesn't quite bring the rain snow into Chicago, just some cold rain for you tomorrow. But look at all that rain as it spreads into the northeast tomorrow. Friday, it's an inland event with the second low moving in. And we have the moisture in place with the cold air. So right through West Virginia, Western PA, upstate New York, going to be looking at a good chance for that rain and snow to mix in. As far as the heaviest and rainfall amounts, maybe over into the higher mountains of West Virginia, anywhere from one to two inches of rain through Friday. Alex? All right, let's talk about that cold air blast heading into places like Minneapolis. Get ready for it. It is coming early to mid next week, going to be downright cold. Right now, we are in the mid-30s in Minot and Fargo. And I think if you're watching, you're saying, hey, that, that seems pretty cold, right? Minneapolis, 45. These are some of the warmer readings that you've got coming in your seven-day forecast. Up to the north, into parts of Canada, that's where the cold air resides. And it is going to make a push, maybe a punch, off towards the south. I guess that's what you should call it, because it's going to plunge all the way down towards the Gulf Coast. So even parts of the south, New Orleans to Atlanta, will feel the chill. The coldest air, though, focused into the northeast, the Great Lakes and the Northern Plains. So let's talk numbers. That's what you're waiting for, right? Highs next Monday, looking at upper 20s for Great Falls and Bismarck, mid 30s into Minneapolis. By Tuesday, Chicago, a high of only 38, only in the 40s in Kansas City. Next Wednesday, 50, Atlanta, 36, Cleveland, 29, Rapid City. These highs are anywhere from 15 to 20 degrees below average for a lot of spots. And as Carl mentioned, if you were watching earlier, Carl Parker said, 
We've also got wind to deal with with this, so you know that just makes it feel even colder. Minneapolis, your seven-day forecast looks like this. Snow on Monday with a high of 34, highs only in the upper 20s by Tuesday and Wednesday. And in St. Louis, we're going to end the week in the mid-50s. Look at next Wednesday. Despite the sunshine, you'll be stuck in the 30s. Jennifer. Well, one of the most amazing weather stories of the week is happening right now in the Pacific Ocean. Typhoon Nuri is losing strength, but it still has a lot of energy, and that's going to have a huge impact on the United States. We liked this one so much that we brought in a team of experts to help break it down. So here's Tom Nizzle and Dr. Greg Postel. That's right. I mean, really, weather on the other side of the world can impact our weather right here, right now. And sometimes tropical cyclones moving into the jet stream can do just that. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, we've got a fantastic satellite image here that shows Nuri and how it transforms as it gets to higher latitudes. That's exactly right, Tom. You don't need a textbook to see this. Look at the satellite pictures right now. There's Typhoon Nuri in the West Pacific and see those clouds streaming way back. It's already coupling and mingling with the jet stream. And so some of those fast winds are already moving into parts of North America and giving the jet stream a little extra wiggle, a little bit more than it would otherwise have. And it's amazing to see this energy and see where it ends up in the Bering Sea. This is a major storm system. Yeah, it is a major storm system. And let's see how this can all happen, how the weather over there yeah. can impact the weather over here. Yeah, so let's go ahead and go to the big screen here. And Greg, this is your area of expertise, and I'm fascinated to see how tropical cyclone energy can actually force the jet stream when it gets to higher latitudes and produce changes in weather downstream stream in North America. Yeah, it is pretty cool. A lot of times what we see with these tri tropical cyclones moving north, the air flowing aloft at very high altitudes, about 30,000 feet, kind of punches up against the jet stream right there, strengthens it a little bit, and then cause a little extra wiggles in the jet stream downstream from there, giving it a little extra kick. And oftentimes we end up with a pattern that looks something like this. Now this pattern may have already been there, but maybe it's got a little bit more uh, oomph to it with the tropical cyclone help. And that own things ends up in these big undulations. And I, you know, we spare no expense here. So I want to work with you on this. Yeah. And, and it's show not how spring. This, this is still winter, Tom. Oh, very good. Yeah. I like that. So yeah. uh, what I'm going to talk about is kind of how it all can happen sort of physically. Like, okay. imagine I'm going to be Nuri in the West Pacific. And where are you, Tom? I'm right say in Minneapolis, the heart of the continent. Okay, you like it cold. So this will be good for very you. Much. Okay, right? So I'm Typhoon Nuri right now, kind of giving the jet stream a little bit of a kick right in there. And so we're getting some more wiggles, perhaps, in North America already than we might have. But you know what? Nuri's going to morph into a giant winter storm over the Bering Sea, and you know what's going to happen then. Oh, wow. Then you're going to see big undulations in that jet stream, and you're seeing those big waves right here. This is what we end up with in the atmosphere, isn't it? It is. And so let's go to what Nuri is going to look like eventually in the coming few days over the North Pacific. And there is a powerful storm system drawing a lot of warm up air way up in high latitudes north of the Arctic Circle. Yeah, one of the most powerful we've seen on record. Well, you're going to see seas to 40 feet out there, commercial fishing, fishing interests going to have to stay in port, but this is going to drive a big undulation in the pattern here, isn't it? Yeah, and that cold air, some of the coldest air we've seen this season is going to be riding south across the northern plains. Tom, this is your favorite kind of weather. You know what might happen over the Great Lakes? Absolutely. You put this cold air over the still warm waters of the Great Lakes, probably an extended period of lake effect snow for that region there. And I'll tell you, look at how far south that cold air goes. There's no stopping it. A lot of times these Arctic air masses come south. They go all the way to the Gulf Coast, and there's no reason to think that this time will be anything different. Look at some of these numbers for next Tuesday. Well, 37 for a high in Chicago, 13 degrees below what we normally see. And by the time you get into Wednesday, the cold air is even going to be deeper, further down into the southern U.S. In parts of the Appalachians, 20 degrees colder than what we normally see. Atlanta, a high of 50, 15 degrees below normal. You and I are betting men. If we had to sort of pick one way or the other, if this forecast is going to verify yeah. colder or warmer, what would you think? I often see it go colder. I think you're going the same way, right? Same way. I think we're right on in this Absolutely. One. Watch out. It's going to get cold. All right. Here it comes. Thanks, I guess. <laughs> well, up next, a historic discovery, and it may not have happened without Superstorm Sandy. Plus, this hail, one of our top five videos, it does not take the number one spot, though. We will give you the full countdown after your local on the eighth. Currently in our area, 75 degrees under cloudy skies.
tonight. Some clouds, low 70. Winds east-northeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Thursday, partly cloudy, high 81. Winds east-northeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Thursday night, a few clouds from time to time, low 65. Winds light and variable. Here's our seven-day outlook. When your house loses power, it can be tough for your family. But not if your family has a Kohler generator. Restores power automatically in as little as 10 seconds and is backed by a five-year limited warranty. Kohler Generators. Keep your family flowing. When the power goes out, you'll go on. Contact your Kohler Generators dealer today. Today we're getting record snowfall. Radars indicate there's been flooding throughout the area. We're getting hail the size of golf balls. Maglite. Turn your light on, America. There it is. This is where I met your grandpa. Right under this tree. Some things are worth holding on to. They're hugging the tree. That's why we got a Subaru. Was it that tree? Introducing the all-new Subaru Outback. Love, it's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. I've had it with my moderate to severe plaque psoriasis. The frustration, covering up. So I talked with my doctor. He prescribed Embril. Embril is clinically proven to provide clearer skin. Many people saw 75% clearance in three months, and Embril helped keep skin clearer at six months. Embril may lower your ability to fight infections. Serious, sometimes fatal events including infections, tuberculosis, lymphoma, other cancers, nervous system and blood disorders, and allergic reactions have occurred. Before starting Embril, your doctor should test you for tuberculosis and discuss whether you've been to a region where certain fungal infections are common. You should not start Embril if you have an infection like the flu. Tell your doctor if you're prone to infections, have or sores, have had hepatitis B, have been treated for heart failure, or if you have symptoms such as persistent fever, bruising, bleeding, or paleness. Finally, clearer skin for more than a few days, weeks, or months. Embril works for me. Ask your dermatologist if you can have clearer skin with Embril. December 7th. Go ahead, mark your calendars. It's the last day you can switch your Medicare Part D plan. We're ready, and we can't wait to switch. What I wanted was simple the most value for my dollar. So now that it's time, we're making the move to a plan that really works for us. Make the switch to an AARP Medicare RX plan insured through United Healthcare. Open enrollment ends December 7th, so don't wait. Call now for a free enrollment guide, which includes a summary of plan benefits and other helpful information, or enroll right over the phone. Discover why AARP Medicare RX Part D plans are so popular with over 5 million plan members and counting. Choose a plan with low premiums or one with no annual deductible and start saving with your first prescription fill. Plus, we'll be covered in like 60,000 pharmacies. So if you visit our kids in Portland or go anywhere in the country, we know we're covered. Enjoy co-pays for as low as $1 with the preferred retail pharmacy network, which includes thousands of pharmacies and retail locations like these. United Healthcare has worked to get low costs for plan members. I called the moment I heard about it. I even got help picking out the perfect plan for me. So did my wife. It was easy, really easy. Get ready for a Part D plan that gives you low premiums or no annual deductible and coverage you can be happy with. December 7th is coming. I'm glad we're switching. <laughs> Open enrollment ends December 7th, so don't wait. Make the switch to an AARP Medicare RX plan. With United Healthcare, you'll discover a great way you can save money while making sure you're taking care of yourself. So call now for a free enrollment guide, which includes a summary of plan benefits and other helpful information. Or enroll right over the phone. AARP Medicare RX plans insured through United Healthcare. Call today.
Sandy changed the landscape of New York and New Jersey, and now the side effects of the superstorm have led to a historic discovery. WNBC's Brian Thompson reports. It may not look like much more than a pile of old timbers, but this wreckage could just possibly be that of this ship, the Ayrshire, which foundered off Squan Beach 164 years ago, but launched a revolution in nearshore life-saving. If this is indeed that vessel, it had the fortune of wrecking right in front of a life-saving station equipped with the life car to test and they were very, very successful. The life car looks like this, and on that freezing January day in 1850, 201 of the 202 immigrants and crew on board the Ayrshire were brought ashore to safety with a device never used before, but used often after. This wreckage was found buried under some 20 feet in the sand by a construction crew building a steel wall to protect brick and manaloking from a future Sandy. It actually broke one of the pile drives drivers being used on this project. It's never washed up in all the prior storms. After Sandy, it didn't wash up. Now we find it, you know, two years after Sandy. But it is not clear yet what this wreckage comes from. Any number of ships were lost along this stretch of the shore, including this one, the Cornelius Grinnell, also right off Squan Beach. The state will send in an archaeologist with ground-penetrating radar to further investigate in the next week or so. But if it is a ship, and not, for example, a barge, there could be a small treasure trove of personal items dating back to the mid and early 19th century. They are, in fact, time capsules. Whatever happens to this wreckage, and if it's of historical value, it won't be left here. The state DEP says this steel wall, except maybe here, will be finished on time before winter. In Brick, Brian Thompson, News 4 New York. All right, cool story, yeah. and now we've got more coolness for you because it is time for the top five videos from around the world and beyond. <laughs> and number five, we head over into West Texas, into Lubbock, where the rain was really coming down yesterday, and of course, this video sped up. They don't drive that fast Has in to Texas. Be right? Otherwise, hold your horses. <laughs> The area did see more than two inches of rain. That was record rainfall yesterday. Number four, New South Wales was pummeled with hail. Video from inside the car. You can hear it. Y'all know that sound. Uh -huh. That's the sound of hopefully not an insurance claim. Yeah, a little popcorn sound there. All right, number three, an officer captures a rare meteor shower on his dash camera. He was working the third shift here in Benwood, West Virginia. So Sergeant Luke Thomas of the police department saw this way up in the sky. Very cool. Uh -huh. One of the perks to being out there at night with the dash cam. Number two, you might want to talk about uh, the queasy feeling that you've got around Amsterdam as crosswinds cause this jet at Schiphol to briefly touch down and then go, nope, nope, we're going to go right back up. Not so easy for the easy jet. Yeah, hopefully everybody's seatbelt was very secure there. You've got to make sure that is. All right, you see all these black areas on the sun? This is our number one video. It's what is the largest sunspot recorded since 1990, and it caused a lot of massive solar flares over the sun. These are the solar flares. Coming. How cool is that? Amazing looks stuff from outer almost space. Almost Photoshopped, or doesn't something. it? Or it looks like a, a backdrop on your computer. It, a screensaver. That's, that's you're right about that. <laughs> hey, you can upload your videos anytime at weather.com/slash photos. I know you got some awesome ones to share. Well, beautiful, rare weather that most people don't get to see until now. Because we want you to stick around. We have something very special for you coming up after the break. His name is Carl Parker. <laughs> he's so special. No, he's our, he's going to give us our winter weather update and talk about cold air and even lake effect snow that's on the way. Oh boy. Parts of New York, oh. that Rockefeller Center, although it looks like a winter wonderland there at the ice skating. Uh, but they bring the 60s today in their ice skating. Yeah, wow. northern New York, western New York, you could get in some snow showers through the end of the week. We're going to be talking more about that forecast, but we'll leave you as we go to local on the 8s so with a uh, just a nice view. This puts you in a good mood, doesn't it? Uh -huh. Except for that guy who fell. Help him up. <laughs> at Ancestry, we call it a hint. Our little leaf that helps guide you through the past. Simply type in a name and you're taken on a journey. A journey that crosses generations and continents. All to tell the most amazing story. Yours. Discover your story. Start searching for free now at Ancestry.com. Sir, we're going to need you on the runway. 
Theraflu starts to get to work in your body in just five minutes. Theraflu breaks you free from your worst cold and flu symptoms. Theraflu, serious power. Tomorrow, a Weather Channel first, the Winter Weather Prep Rally, a day dedicated to prepping and surviving winter's worst. Best advice, try not to travel. In the morning, you've got our winter weather outlook. And at night, this is an incredibly deadly time of year. Yeah, it's brutal. Watch the Winter Weather Prep Rally. Starts tomorrow morning on the Weather Channel. CNBC Wednesday nights, we're wheeling and dealing with Shark Tank at 8 and 9 Eastern and the Car Chasers at 10 on the fastest growing network in prime time, CNBC. Currently in our area, 75 degrees under cloudy skies.